microphone this morning. Hopefully it'll make me a little easier to hear. Welcome to a morning prayer at Epiphany Lutheran Church. I'm Philip Martin, one of the pastors here, and uh, glad to join our online community in praise of God who sustains us during this time of pandemic. We will sing a version of the Apostles' Creed that we're singing and learning this morning. I believe, I do believe, truly I believe it. That's That right there is the whole chorus of the song. I believe, I do believe, truly I believe it, truly I believe it, truly I believe it, I believe I do believe, truly I believe it, truly I believe it, truly I believe it. Try that again. I believe, I do believe, truly. Mighty Lord Creator, Mighty Lord Creator, I believe in God the Almighty Lord Creator. Mighty Lord Creator, Mighty Lord Creator, I believe I do believe truly. I believe it truly. I believe it truly. I believe it. I believe I do believe truly. I believe it truly. I believe it truly. I believe it. I believe in Jesus the Savior of the people, Savior of the people, Savior of the people. I believe. I believe I do believe truly. I believe it truly. I believe it truly. I believe it. I believe I do believe truly. I believe it truly. I believe it truly. I believe it, and I do believe in the power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. I do, and I do believe in the power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. I believe I do believe truly. I believe it truly. I believe. Lord be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> be with us, Lord, as we wake up this morning and give our lives in praise and thanksgiving to you and all that you have done for us and promise yet to do. We thank you for the communities uh, that you have made us a part of, especially the community of the Holy Spirit, your church. Uh, and as we struggle to love the church and walk with the church. Help us be at peace and unity with all of your people who have been baptized into Christ. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> our reading this morning is from the book of 2 Corinthians, uh, towards the end of that book, 13th chapter. Paul writes, this is the third time I am coming to you. Any charge must be sustained by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warned those who sinned previously and all the others, and I warn them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not be lenient, since you desire proof that Christ is speaking in me. He is not weak in dealing with you but is powerful in you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. The word of the Lord. The, uh, lost my pick. Um, the theme uh, from that's carrying over from really the last two Sundays, but um, uh, more specifically last Sunday, is a theme of forgiveness, the theme of, a theme of mercy and grace within how it is embodied in God's people. Uh, and we here heard the story of uh, the parable of the unforgiving servant who was forgiven but then went out and was very harsh with somebody uh, who owed him something. And we've talked about how pleasant it is for the kindred of God to dwell together in unity. And here this morning we hear 
a snippet of one of Paul's letters. The letter to the second letter to the Corinthians is probably a hodgepodge of several letters. And we hear Paul kind of losing through the course of his letters to the to the first to the Corinthians, almost like he's losing them. Uh, they there's conflict among them and conflict not just among them but conflict with Paul and that really becomes clear in Second Corinthians especially towards the end where they are distrusting him. Uh, there are people it seems to be within the community of Corinth who are doubting Paul's authority, the wisdom that he has, and the power. They we can kind of piece together from the letters of Corinthians, that they are, they are really enamored with worldly power and wisdom. And of course, that is going to always have a problem squaring with the gospel because, as Paul says even this morning, the cross is about weakness. And the cross and Jesus on the cross is about humility and about being made known in our weakness. Uh, the power of God doesn't always look like the power of humans. What I find interesting and what I think we can learn from this part of Paul's letter to the Corinthians is that he doesn't just give them up. He doesn't just say, you know, this isn't worth it anymore. You go your way, we'll go our way. He is always feeling bound to them by the gift of his baptism, by the power of the Holy Spirit. God has made them one, even though they clearly do not feel like they are one. They are kind of giving up on Paul. They are doubting him. And he says, you know, I'm going to come to you a third time, and I'm not going to be lenient. I'm going to really lay things down, lay them out on the line for you. He's already gone to them two other times to kind of straighten things out and 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 show them what the way of the gospel is, that it is made known in our weakness. I think that's important because I think so often, oh gosh, it's pretty much the way of the church and the world now where it, we kind of give people one strike and then they're out. You know, if you, you cross me once, well, I just, there's enough other people to deal with. I don't really have to worry about you anymore. Um, and Paul's example, just his example, not necessarily his words, but just his example that he wants to continue, he's going to travel to see them to try to live out this unity. I think the second thing that we learn from Paul and his example is to let grace lead the way. He's very strong in his language here, and especially in his letter to the Galatians, he's very strong. But he still, even in this brief component, a brief portion today, he talks about he wants to be with them. And he's, he's not going to be lenient, but he knows Christ is powerful in them. He knows it. And I think that's a helpful uh, um, hint or uh, counsel for us in how we can deal with conflict in the church, in our personal relationships with other, other Christians, um, other people of faith, is we, we don't have to sugarcoat things. We can be direct when somebody has offended us or somebody is wronging us or in a state of uh, discord with them, but we can always let grace lead and we can always point out things that are positive about the other person. Um, this is vital, I think, now, just in our general discourse. I don't know how far we're going to go with that in our political realm, because it just seems that uh, we are happy to, A, cut people off and just say, go your way. Um, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. Or we're just going to grab them by the throat uh, as much as we can uh, and just kind of write people off. Um, and I am as guilty of this as anyone else. Um, and I think Paul uh, shows his own humility at times uh, that he is not as excellent as, it, as he hopes he is. So conflict, living together in unity, the issues of forgiveness and reconciliation, 
uh, that's really kind of our main thing as people of God, because that's what the cross is about, is about Jesus doing everything that he can, even dying, to make us one with God with whom we are so estranged. And Jesus is successful. Jesus is powerful in his weakness. Jesus is, is wise in what looks like foolishness. And we are God's people forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, give us patience with one another. Give us grace and words of peace, even when words of harshness and anger seem to rise to the surface so easily. Give us a longing to be reconciled with one another so that we can work from that longing <clears throat> and do the hard choices and find the words to persist and stay together in spite of disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I pray, Lord, for all of those uh, listening, all of those praying with me this morning <clears throat> who have conflict in their families or conflict in their relationships and friendships. Um, help us all to sit with our conflict and let it teach us what it is about ourselves and other people that we find so damaging, that we find so troubling, so that you may work in our weakness and help us be powerful in building bridges again with those people in our lives uh, that we have conflict with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the conflict and the reconciliation that is needed in our world, among political parties, among leaders, among um, the people that are making decisions in our government. Uh, help us catch a greater vision, a wider vision outside of ourselves of the common good, and help us work towards that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for all of those who have conflict in their lives and their bodies and spirits and minds because they are lonely or they are depressed or they are suffering from substance abuse um, and for those who are, are ill uh, and struggling with treatments, for Jeff, for Carol, uh, for Nancy Foose as she recovers from her heart attack, from Pe for Peggy Roberts as she recovers from her heart attack and stroke, and for Chris Eubank, who is hospitalized, we ask <clears throat> that you be with them, strengthen them, and let them know that you are near them and healing them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive our trespass. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.